Hello, I'm the Ben Crazy. I don't have a lav mic, and this is a Ryzen 7 3800X that is now three years old. And there's a question that's been bouncing around my head for the last month. Is it worth it upgrading from a CPU that was released three years ago to the last CPU that will be released for the now old AM4 socket, the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D? Is the performance really going to be worth the price to upgrade? Online, the answer to that question has been mixed, ranging from it being a minimum bump in performance that would be like buying your CPU all over again, to it being a such a big performance bump that would be like upgrading from a RTX 2080 to a 3080 graphics card. So with such a mixed bag of whether or not it'd be worth it, I decided to find out for myself and bought the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. In this video, we're gonna find out if it was worth it or if I just wasted my money. First, let's go over the price. At the time of making this video, I snagged up the 5800X 3D on sale at Micro Center for $329. On the opposite side of that, looking at sold items on eBay, if I try to sell my old 3800X, it could go anywhere from between $150 to $175 realistically. So best case scenario, if I sell it for $175, that's a loss of $154 or 46% for this upgrade. Now you would think that would be a bad price, but let's look at if I try to upgrade to the next generation of CPUs using the new AM5 socket. First, I not only have to get a new CPU, but I also need to get a new AM5 socket motherboard, which looking at Micro Center's listing, the cheapest option is $824. On top of that, I need new sticks of RAM as AM5 only supports DDR5, while I only have DDR4. That adds an additional cost of $150 to $200. So altogether, that would be a loss of about $975. And if we subtract what I could sell my old equipment for, which would be around $300, I would lose $675 or four times the amount of money than upgrading to the 5800X3D. Upgrading to the next-gen CPU just does not make sense, really right now for anyone at this time. Even if you started from scratch, price-wise, it would still make more sense to go for the older AM4 socket CPU than the new AM5. But let's get back on topic. This video isn't for comparing the newest CPUs, it's for comparing the 3800X to the 5800X to see if it was worth me buying it. So let's test them and find out the results. First, I'm going to test the performance of each CPU in Cinebench and see what scores we get. Then I'm going to switch to real world testing with four games that use the CPU in different ways. With Warzone 2, we will see how they compare with a modern title. Then we will switch to a classic GTA 5 and see how the two CPUs fare with an older title. We will then switch it up and try emulating MotorStorm Pacific Rift on RPCS3. And lastly, test with iRacing, one of the most demanding games for single core performance. For every game, I will be testing in 4K and HDR if available, as that is my current setup and most likely the future target for gaming. I will also be recording with OBS at the same time as benchmarking. Outside of that, I have 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, running at 3600 megahertz and NVIDIA RTX 3080, all on an ASUS B450F motherboard with a correct BIOS firmware for each CPU. As always, chapters are available in the description below, so you can skip around the video to what interests you the most. Starting off with Cinebench, it should give us a synthetic performance breakdown of both CPUs. For the results, the 3800X got a score of 4,667 with a single core performance of 484. On the 5800X 3D, we got a score of 5,440 with a single core performance of 555. That is an increase in performance of 14% and 13% for a single core. Now on to real world performance starting with Warzone 2. It should give us a good look at modern gaming performance between the two CPUs. Unfortunately, during my testing, Warzone seemed to be more bottlenecked with the GPU than any of the CPUs with numbers between them within error. Now I say within error,
because it was very hard to benchmark this game with the variables of player count and the amount of players around me at the time of testing. So even though I got a lower average FPS in this testing with 5800X3D, another benchmark would show three to five frames better. So I'm calling this a wash, which really is a loss for the 5800X3D as we really saw no performance improvement from the upgrade. Now on to an older title, which is GTA 5. Thankfully, this game provides a great benchmarking tool that will give us a more accurate result. Here, we do see a jump in performance. We got a 12% increase in average frame rate, which closely matches the bump we saw in Cinebench testing. We also see an 18% and a 15% bump in the 1% and the 0.1% low frame rates, meaning that this game will look smoother with less hitching on the 5800X3D. So definitely a performance upgrade, but not really an increase worth the price, at least for this game. Now to go over to the emulation side of things with RPCS3 running MotorStorm Pacific Rift at 4K 60fps. I benchmarked this with running one lap using the same driving line. We do see a small 7% bump in average frame rate, but one thing to note about this game is that it's locked at 60 frames max, meaning we're not going to see a performance bump here. Instead, we see a massive performance gains in the 1% and the 0.1 low frame rate with an 18% and a 44% increase, greatly improving the smoothness and gameplay compared to the 3800X. In this game, I definitely noticed a difference. It was way more playable, and it was worth the upgrade for emulating on RPCS3. For the last game I'm testing, we're going to iRacing, which is one of the most demanding games for not only CPU performance, but also single core performance. I benchmarked this game by using a replay file with the supercars running two laps around Daytona at night. Here, we see the biggest performance blowout yet, going from the 3800X to the 5800X3D. Not only do we see a 30% increase in average frame rate, we also see a 35% increase in 1% lows and 31% increase in 0.1% lows. Not only is the average frame rate better, we are also getting way smoother gameplay. This is like upgrading to a new GPU for this game. I'm very surprised by the performance increase here. So, did I waste my money? Well, if I only played modern titles like Warzone 2 or games that are more GPU intensive than CPU intensive, then I would have said yes. But I play all different types of games, new and old, emulated, and so forth, which seems to be more CPU intensive. So in the case of GTA 5, RPCS3, definitely iRacing, it was worth the upgrade at least for me. But what about you? Should you get a 5800X3D if you have a 3800X or lower? I say go for it. It's four times cheaper than upgrading to the new AM5 CPUs, and in my eyes, this upgrade should last you about three to five years at least. Even more if you stick with just upgrading your GPU, and in that time frame, that would allow you to skip the AM5 generation completely. But what about those that need a brand new computer starting out fresh? I still think at the time of making this video, it is more cost effective to stick with a cheaper AM4 motherboard and use this CPU than going for the new and shiny AM5 generation. Used and new hardware for AM4 is cheap, and you can still upgrade just your GPU in the future to increase performance for games. And the 5800X3D is beating the current AM5 GPUs head to head anyways. Though we could never predict the future of what the performance gains of the new CPUs will have in 2024 and so forth. We'll just have to wait and see. So I appreciate you watching this video. Give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Don't forget to comment below if you have any questions or concerns. And I'm the Ben Crazy, and I'll see you later. Ben Crazy, out.